Susan Candiotti of CNN, who joins us now. She uh, had the story, broke the story about an email trail at Penn State and uh, went all the way to the top. What would you say is the most damning email of this trail, Susan? Well, I think there are two key points. Hi, Dan, and thanks for inviting me. Uh, I think the first one is that these purported emails appear to show that Penn State officials actually had a plan. They had a plan about the 2001 shower incident, and that plan clearly included contacting child welfare agencies. But the other key thing, Dan, is this. In the second purported email, there's a reference to having a conversation with Joe Paterno, the athletic director, Tim Curley, talking to Paterno. And and this appears to show, for the first time, that Joe Paterno had another conversation, not previously known, about the incident with his boss and suggests that, he apparent, that whatever he apparently said may, might have prompted Tim Curley to change his mind about calling child welfare. And, and instead, the Penn State, according to these emails, decided to handle it internally. So could that have implications about what we know about the extent of Paterno's possible role in the university's decision in their decision-making process here. Uh, the email, if you could uh, categorize, vague or specific in nature? Well, these are, it's interesting, too, because they're written in code, yeah. but it's not a very hard code to crack. Uh, Jerry Sandusky is never mentioned by name. His charity, The Second Mile, is not mentioned by name. The boys involved in this case are boy, uh, not mentioned by name. Instead, they, they talk about the subject and the person, referring to Jerry Sandusky, according to my sources. And you hear about uh, the second mile is mentioned by a charitable organization. And the third reference is that they're going to talk about talk to Sandusky about the appropriate use of the facilities by his guests. So hmm. we're to believe that the boys are referred to as guests in this very serious matter. The authorities have these emails? They do. As a matter of fact, my understanding is that it was former FBI Director Louis Free who uh, originally found these emails uh, a few, as recently as a few months ago during his independent investigation, and he turned them over along with other files found in Schultz's office as an example, among the things that he turned over to state prosecutors immediately as part of their ongoing investigation. Anything uh, off the record from Penn State on these emails to you? Well, if it was off the record, <laughs> I couldn't tell Well, no, you no, that. I'm just saying, no, did they respond to you? That you No, know, I understand, I understand. Yeah. Uh, uh, n- no, uh, we've not heard any response from them, uh, but we have heard a response from the lawyers representing Curley and Schultz. And, and in that response, they're talking about... Uh, they're saying, faced with tough situations, good people try to do the best to make the right decisions, referring to the role of Curly, Schultz, Spanier, and Paterno in this. A lawyer for Spanier has not returned any of my calls. Susan Candiotti of CNN joining us, Dan Patrick Show. She got the uh, email, a trail that went all the way to the top with the president of the university. Joe Paterno did not use email. Uh, that, that's right. Uh, so any other responses? Does uh, any of these email refer to responses from Joe Paterno, uh, you know, through somebody else's email? This is, on, this is the only reference to Joe Paterno uh, in this one email. And a, an attorney for the Paterno family uh, immediately uh, told us that, as you said, number one, Paterno never used emails himself. Two, they see this as a leak and trying to take things out of context. Uh, and three, they said Joe Paterno always told the truth, testified truthfully before the grand jury about this, and never interfered with any investigation. CNN have more on this uh, story, more email? Well, we're, sh- we're still working. I'm still working it. And uh, obviously, as soon as we get something more, we're, we're planning an update about all of this at some point today. Uh, as to more emails, we'll, we'll see what 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 we find out. I don't know if you found this out. I don't know if there's an email trail, but there was, I think, sort of a hint at the possibility that Mike McQuarrie was hired full-time as an assistant coach as a way of keeping him on staff because he had witnessed the uh, shower scene with Jerry Sandusky and one of the boys. Uh, anything well, in the email trail for that, Susan? 
Uh, there is nothing that reflects that. Uh, this is the extent of the emails that we have so far, although I do have from a, a source as well who's knowledgeable about the case, uh, familiar with the investigation, that that is one area that they are looking at, looking at whether uh, Mike McQuarrie and his rise through the ranks might have had anything at all to do with how this all played out. Great stuff, Susan. We appreciate it. We'll be uh, following it. Thank you, Dan. All right, Susan Candiani, CNN.